So in this video, we're going to discuss the basics of markets. The first thing we need to discuss when we're talking about markets is the invisible hand. The invisible hand just states that individuals acting in their own self-interest are going to provide consumers with the right combination of goods. It just means consumers are going to purchase what they want and producers are going to do their best to make something they can sell to consumers. If you think about the movie market, film companies are only going to make movies that are going to sell tickets. If you think about a fish market, fishermen go out and they try and catch fish, and then they're going to sell those fish to people who are hungry to buy fish. And in Cincinnati, we have one big amusement park in Kings Island, um, and people that want to ride roller coasters pay admission to go to Kings Island and ride roller coasters. Okay? The invisible hand says, hey, people are acting in their own self-interest to try and provide these things to consumers. We don't have 17 amusement parks in Cincinnati because there's no market for a 17th amusement park. What is a market? Well, a market is just buyers and sellers who are going to trade a particular good or service, right? Typically, we think of these buyers and sellers as both being better off because of the trade. Okay? So there are two types of economies that you can have. You can have a command economy, such as Soviet Russia, so the Soviet Union, uh, was a command economy. Most of these are associated with uh, communism. But what we're more interested in is a market economy. We're going to be talking mostly about market economies. And market economies just say that people are in charge of their own production and consumption of goods. So in the United States, uh, most of our industries are run by um, individual companies. And individual consumers can choose whether or not they want to purchase most goods. So a market economy would just be complete freedom of choice. Uh, we have a little bit of a mixed economy, but we're more towards a market econ economy than a lot of other countries. Um, if we want to take an example, look at an example of our market economy. Let's take a look at the fish market. So the market for fish starts with fishermen. And they go out and they try and catch as many fish as they can of the right weight or size um, so that they can go ahead and give those to people who prep the fish to get sent to grocery stores, right? So somebody else is gonna work on putting all the fish in bags and getting them all prepped so that they can go on a truck where someone else will transport these fish to a local grocery store. In this instance, we're looking at transporting fish to Kroger. And then once they get to Kroger, there's gonna be someone working behind the butcher stand selling you a certain amount of fish, however much you want. If you want three fillets of tilapia, if you want five pounds of catfish, they'll have all of it there. And you, the consumer, are allowed to pick. Let's think about as a restaurant, say this guy here is buying all the fish he needs for his restaurant for the coming three days. And he's buying them from that person who's selling fish. And then you finally are the consumer eating your fish at the restaurant. So we have six steps where each person is in their own self-interest, trying to catch fish, prep fish, move the fish, uh, sell the fish as a butcher, and then purchase the fish as a restaurant and prepare the fish for you yourself, who's finally paying for the fish to consume and eat. So right there is an example of one market in our market economy. What is a competitive market? Well, a competitive market is a market in which fully informed price-taking buyers and sellers easily trade a standardized good or service. What the heck am I talking about here, right? Uh, so let's break this down. There's actually four components in here. We have to have standardized goods with no transaction costs, full information, and our participants need to be price takers. So let's look at each of those four things, make sure we understand what all four of those things are that make up a competitive market. So we start with standardized goods. They're just a good for which any two units have the same features and are interchangeable. So we think about milk, footballs, basketballs, baseballs, clothing, anything like that. All of these goods can be exchanged for one good or another. If you're going to Kroger and you're looking at all the gallons of milk, hey, you could have whole milk, 2% milk, or skim milk. Those are the different kinds of milk. But if you look at all the 2% milks, are you gonna pick one gallon of milk over the other? No, they're all pretty much the same. There's no real way for us to tell the difference. And if you think about clothes, you might be willing to pay more for a shirt from uh, American Eagle than you would for a shirt from Old Navy. But these are interchangeable goods. Okay? They're both shirts. Full information means that we have knowledge of all the specifications for a good or service. Okay? If we want to think about uh, 
apples, any fruit or vegetable, we know what apples taste like. Uh, we know that there are different kinds of apples, and we know if we want a Granny Smith apple, or if we want a Gala apple, or a different kind of apple, that we can buy those at the grocery store. Same for gasoline, right? We have full information on the gasoline. We need it to run our car, and it says when we go to the pump, if we're buying 87, 89, or 93 premium gasoline, we know the price, we know all the specs for the good or the service that we're purchasing. That's all full information means. We know what we're buying. Uh, the transaction cost uh, is just a cost that is incurred by a buyer or a seller when they agree to exchange goods or services. The main example of something that has a transaction cost is home sales. When you go to purchase a home, it's often through a real estate agent and the real estate agent and the agent's company will charge a fee for helping the seller sell the house and helping the buyer find a house. But in a competitive market, we're not gonna have these transaction costs, right? If you are again at the grocery store buying apples, all you do is pick the apples that you want, stick them in your basket, go to the cash register and pay for them. There's no costs added to them at the cash register. There's no transaction costs. They aren't making you pay extra to buy the apples. You're just paying what the price of the apples is at the grocery store. And then the last, the fourth requirement of a competitive market is that both buyers and sellers are price takers, okay? So there is no one purchaser of Holtman's Donuts that can say, hey, Holtman's, I need you to make me 5 billion donuts and I want them for 10 cents instead of the usual $1.50 that you sell them for. Uh, that would be called a monopsony. Basically, there's no one buyer that can change the price and there's no one seller that can change the price. If you think about uh, Finley Market, there's a few butchers in Finley Market um, and a couple of them are right across the aisle from each other, right? So if one butcher is selling ribs for $15 a pound um, and the other butcher is also selling ribs for $15 a pound, then the next day, butcher number one decides, hey, you know what, I'm not making as much money as I thought I wanted to. I'm gonna up the price of ribs to $30 a pound. Uh, no one's gonna buy his ribs anymore. They're all gonna go to the butcher on the other side of the aisle and spend $15, okay? So those sellers, neither one can really affect the price of ribs. They both are just gonna set the price similar to what the price is right across the aisle. What are some other examples of competitive markets? Uh, the first example, the most common example is food. Um, if you think about food that comes out of the ground, right? Corn, wheat, strawberries. Um, these are really popular examples of a competitive market where there's no, no one can set the price. Um, it meets all four of our criteria. Another example of a competitive market is grocery stores or friendly market. Food is a very good example of a competitive market in general. Gasoline, competitive market. Here's the uh, exit where my parents live down in Union. So there's three gas stations right when you get off the exit and turn right, there's a Shell station, a BP, and a Pilot. All three of them sell gas, which is basically the same product, and all three of them show you the price while you're driving on the street. So you can pick whichever one you want. They're a competitive market. Um, and another example is just trading currencies. If you've traveled internationally, you can trade dollars for other currencies. That's a competitive market. You can trade your dollars for pounds, um, and then these exchange rates change day to day and you can exchange your pounds back to dollars in a week or so and sometimes you make money, sometimes you lose money. It's kind of like a, a gamble in the stock market. It's very similar, okay? But all those are examples of competitive markets. Just a quick review of the four factors of a competitive market. You must have a standardized good, full information. You cannot have transaction costs and participants must be price takers. If any of these four characteristics are not met, then your market becomes imperfect and you no longer have a competitive market.